I'm on my new to me R1200 GS Rally. I've just got it to replace a KTM which got rejected well two KTMs got rejected last year so I'm going to replace that. Just got it to replace a KTM which got rejected well two KTMs actually dad's got rejected as well so I thought we'd get one GS first see how we get on and then get another GS which I think made the most sense. Previously I have had an R1200 GSA from 2014 which is TE spec like this is It's been very hot and it's rained, so a little greaser. That's what I love though, the burbling's excellent. <laughs> wow, they've resurfaced quite a bit of it, I mean it needed doing this. We're up the beautiful cat fiddle, you can see Mac down there, which is nice. You can see Jadrill Bank on a clear day as well which we'll head to at some point but yeah the engine's just absolutely spectacular on these GS's it's nice nice pull where you can just waft through the bends uh, I don't know if anyone noticed but at the bottom of the cat and fiddle that was new they've put a camera behind the bottom never used to be one there it has been a bit since I've been up because obviously I've not had a motorbike with the argument with the KTMs and we're doing work on the Nortons. So video, what we're going to do, I'm going to section it off so if there's any section that you need to know about you can just quickly go through, find what you want or if you want to listen to me going on you can listen to something again which I think is a decent way of doing it. Seems to work on the YV Strom video. So. I guess the big question is why GS? Well it's quite simple, I've had two GS's in the past, I've had a 1200 GSA 2014 which I had for nearly four years and I had an F800 GS which was also good. I had issues with the GS but the difference was in the way BMW on top of the dealer handled the issue compared to how KTM handled the problems with the 390s which obviously meant a change of bike we got them rejected which was the main thing we got all our money back because the dealer did the right thing where KTM wouldn't uh, it's not the first time I've heard of people having trouble with KTM's half the reason we went for the 390 was we wanted to try a lighter bike and on top of that we also wanted to try the brand before we bought say a, a 1290 adventure or something like that and had 20 grand tied up in a uh, very glad we did it the way we did with the issues we had which i'll tell you about in a second but first let's have a break get some nice view up here anyway wow look at that for a view everyone Fiddle. Well, part way up it anyway. Oh. That's one of the main reasons I like the normal GS. No matter how I get off it, it's easy compared to the GSA, which was a bit of a problem. Because if you imagine, if you stop there off road and you got to put your foot down, that extra reach, da da da, bunk, and you're on the deck. So, can fiddle. I'll put the camera into a closer mode and I'll show you the bike. So yeah, that's a R1200 GS. So what I've done to the bike at the moment, not an awful lot really. I've fitted the Puig screen, as you can see there, the Taurian screen, which has made a noticeable difference. The audio on the video the other day was pretty much junk, whereas it's pretty good on this one. Um, what else have I done? Fitted the screen supports as you can see from side mark there to make it nice and solid fit an anti-theft device and that's it really that's all it needs at the moment but overall the bike's pretty clean which is good 20,000 miles 2018 bike's pretty immaculate which is good so how to do this next bit is good as well what do i like about the bike turn her on 
Love the TFT. You can see it there. Really nice. You can see all your status of your bike. You can change all your settings. There's tons you can do. You can control the nav as well from that. To set up, really reduces the amount of wind that's hitting you. I've only got it halfway up as well. I can just tap it up a notch. Right then, I've relocated the mic again, so it's on just under my lips, basically. Now whether this is going to work or not, I don't know. I'm getting at my wits end a bit, at trying to get decent audio now with this GoPro. So KTM's, that's probably the best place to start. What happened with them? Well, basically, everything went wrong. From the moment we got them, we started having a lot of trouble. Uh, Dad's had corrosion on it from new, only with two miles on it. It also had an intermittent stalling issue that was constantly cutting out on the bike. Which was a problem. As you can imagine, you'd let off now like that and bonk the bike and stall. I had a bad habit of doing it, just as you're on bypasses and stuff like that. So, we got rid of it for that reason. Then, we had issues with both the displays, filling up with condensation, obviously do a lot of riding on cold days. And altitude and the combination of the two caused a major problem in mine where the display become illegible which obviously you don't want on some when you're relying on your speed on average camera zones and the same happened with dads but not quite as bad uh, we had a bit of a set 2 KTM they wouldn't do the right thing luckily cut long story short the dealer did they did the right thing but we had stuff like tyres going down brand new uh, as well and lots of other little niggles rusty bolts on brand new bikes which wasn't good as you can imagine, not what you expect. I mean, this has got 20,000 miles on it, and it's four years old, and that is not a speck of rust anywhere on the bike, which is what you want. It's a beautiful day out here in the Peak District. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think the market's crying out for a really lightweight, good, high quality, fit and finish of adventure bike and I just don't think it's there yet but yeah they've made massive improvements to the GS it's really nice to ride now which is good it might help a few other people uh, as you know I've had a bit of a hit and miss success with it unfortunately so I've, I've talked to actually mounting the mic inside the helmet now not underneath the only shame of it is i don't think you can pick up as much of the bike as what i did have it but it's a trade-off uh, obviously everyone was saying they couldn't hear me clearly enough and we can't have that well sales gs owners don't nod <laughs> that's something i never thought i'd hear myself say us gs owners i didn't think i'd be saying that again anytime soon oh. So we're on our way to somewhere better than the Cat and Fiddle. Somewhere everyone needs to go on a GS. It's like the essential place. The Holy Grail! The Starbucks! <laughs> oh, had to be done. Had to be done. Wind mode. It's mounted just under my chin. Well, no. It's mounted where my chin is, above it, but below my lip. It'll be interesting to see if it's working. Hopefully it's doing the job. Stay on the GS. I'd say the seating position is brilliant. You can put your foot down very easily. I've got a 32 inside leg and I've got the seat on the eye position and I can flat foot it on my left foot quite easily while still sometimes actually getting my right foot down which is under i've got 80 grips on now it's just keeping my hands just at a nice level even though it's cold because although it's warm it's 13 degrees 14 degrees it's a bit of wind chill it can get on your hands sometimes so that's just nice fucking i was waffling what was the waffling about 
So I was talking and waffling, what was I waffling about? Where were we up to? Himalayan? Well, cool. I love, I love the Himalayas. <laughs> I still really, really like them. I can see one coming in next year. When the new 450 comes out, and it'll probably drop the price of the 410s a little, I might, uh, might have a look at getting one. So with that little segue, the other thing, parts availability, what put me off with the Guzzi was trying to get parts. I'd read long weights, Kits Piaggio. I have had an Aprilia in the past. I know what that can be like when you're phoning up saying I need this and they go, well it's a national holiday. What? Yeah. So that can be a bit of a pain. But these things happen. Uh, it's part of the thing with having an Italian bike. I needed a couple of bolts on this just because I took a jivvy rack off. Adam, next day, next morning from Germany, be on. You can't whack that, can you? You really can't whack it. Brilliant customer service regarding that. Obviously, you've got the dealer network, the two year proved used warranty, which is another big reason why I went for a GS, just for that peace of mind, European breakdown. But the handling's so nice, it's nice and positive. So, what else could we talk about, everyone? Let's move into the next section, shall we? What bikes did I also fancy that I didn't get? Well, it's quite an easy one, really. I would have liked an Himalayan but I'm doing a lot of motorway work at the moment so the GS made sense over that for the extra gear for the 6 gear which is good and the extra punk and just to cruise at 70 with the cruise as well that was one thing when I had the V-Strom that I missed I did mention in the YV-Strom video was I missed having cruise control because it is handy it's touched my right hand wrist cramping up because I've got a bit of a shoulder injury so it just massively helps mitigate that, which it has been doing, which has been good. And just relax my hand for a minute when I need to. But it's so nice out here in the Peak District. Just having a nice, gentle, relaxing ride. Which, you know, that's why I mainly got the GS. Just for that lovely cruisability. Tarability and having a nice, gentle relaxing ride which is good eh that's what we all want a motorcycle that can do everything I think that's why the GS range has probably been so popular really if you think about it it's a bike that will go off road it'll tar it'll bimble it'll put a grin on your face it'll pop and bang and burble and I've not even got an aftermarket exhaust on which is nice. They thought about everything. And I'd say the seating position is one of the best in the game, really. I, I couldn't think of a more comfier motorcycle that I'd sooner be on than the GS. Steady throttle as much as possible. There's just no surging. It's nice. Maybe like a pogo stick on the older bike. See, I'm very impressed. I, I quite fancied the Guzzi, I must admit. That was one that sort of piqued my interest a bit. But the problem with the Guzzi was quite simple. Three companies wanting a quote, all a thousand quid now. I live in a good area. Never had a smack, never had a speeding ticket. I've got full no climbs bonus, so ouch. Talk about paying for Italian exotic, I'd rather have some German exotic, please. <laughs> it's just so relaxing to ride. Some bikes can be an absolute nightmare. This is why I wanted to do some talking at a 30 zone. Some bikes can be a nightmare doing this sort of riding and just not like to sit at 30 or 20, but no such thing with the GS. It's doing it without even blinking, which is nice. So if you've got any questions, throw them in the comments and I'll answer that's probably the best thing, we'll do a Q&A. So if you want to know anything about the KTM scenario, or you want to know anything about the GS, what I like, don't like, I'll give you an honest answer because I bought it with my own cash. 
so I can tell you anything that you want. I'm not beholden to a manufacturer. If something's rubbish, I'll say it's rubbish, like the KTMs were. They had the pros, but they had a lot of cons, and obviously the issues that we had couldn't be fixed. This was the main problem with the KTMs. We couldn't fix the problems. The screen had no superseded pat, which was a problem. We had no superseded part to sort the surgeon, which was bad on Dad's. Also, one bike was coarser than the other vibration wise, which surprised me. Quite a nice way to end the day watching the sun go down with the mighty GS. So, I guess we're doing a YGS video. So, YGS superb handling, superb headlight, superb wind protection, superb engine, unbelievable front end, still one of my favourite front ends next to the girder front end on the old Nortons which I think is brilliant excellent tank range so GSA to GS the disadvantages of the GSA is obviously the weight handling ability of the bike when you're getting off, getting on etc the GS is a lot easier to manage which is good lower seat height all in all pretty impressive bit of kit so I think the Himalayan was another obvious choice from a cost perspective mainly. I got rolled out purely down to the lack of 6 gear. I think they're a good travel bike, you know, I can't whack it, people going around the world with them. But I would have just liked to 6 gear for the amount of motorway work I'm currently having to do. Um, which is something that the KTMs did have. So it's all just trade-offs really, isn't it? It's, <laughs> Peak district life, eh? So, yeah, where were we? Himalayan. Yeah, I think that was the second most obvious choice, but it got ruled out. <sighs> Unfortunately, it very, very nearly made the, the grain, uh, but I just wanted something for a bit more poke. And obviously, Dad as well. I think it would have just been a step too far. So yeah, the Himalayan was the obvious choice, I thought, next to the GS. But, my riding at the moment is mainly towards this sort of road touring motorway miles. And the route that we're thinking of doing in Iceland now is a lot less extreme. So what we want to do, it'll tick the box perfect. Which is the, which is the main thing. Um, Obviously, I think the Himalayan's got character like the GS has character because obviously that's what you're really after with a motorbike is something that puts a grin on your face that cheers you up and that you enjoy If it doesn't do that and you don't look back at it and grin you're on the wrong bike and I think that is the number one reason why I went for the GS having had one before I knew what I was getting myself into. If I went for the Himalayan, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, which is the problem. Uh, the 300 rally, it's just too far off road for the riding I'm doing, so that ruled that out. It's interesting watching Itchy Boots on it though, which uh, is obviously good, she's having a good time on it. And it's suiting for a trip, which brings me back to the point really. It very much depends on you as an individual. What's right for one person isn't necessarily right for another person you know every motorcyclist is different every need is different and it's very much it's not like me sitting here saying go oh, GS that's not what this video is about it's mainly just me saying this is what I like about the GS 
and this is why it got it over the other options. The other options as well are KTM 1290, not going there because of the reliability with the other K other bikes. The lane was the obvious choice. V-Strom 650, why not a 650 XT? Well, I loved it. I can't complain at it. But I think they're just getting a little long in the tooth now where you've got some of the bells and whistles, you know, like you're riding around here and looking straight down. You can be riding along and pull up everything, tyre pressures, front tyre's a little long, stuff like that. So I'll stop and do that in a sec, there's a garage up there. But it just gives you that information that you need at the touch of a button. Wow, it's going to be nice if I can stop where I think I want to stop. I think that's it in a nutshell really, and obviously the insurance, the V-Strom insurance is about two thirds more expensive than a GS. I can insure this for 250 quid for the year. I mean it's like this now. I know this isn't the way to get on and off, but I'm just showing you. 32 inch inside leg. Both feet on the floor. Perfect. And that is one of the main reasons why I went for this. Couldn't do that on a GSA. Even with my inside leg. With a way to go on. Like they show you on the GS. Knock that off. Swing your leg over. Straight onto the pack. Leave the bike in gear. So it holds it. Uh, come back summer, eh? So I think that's it really in conclusion everyone. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And what would I like to see in closing from BMW? I'd like to see 500 Boxer. I think that would be a perfect bike. I really do. 500, 600cc Boxer. Don't need to be crazy quick. Bit back to basics. Maybe with a detachable screen assembly, so like you got the GS screen assembly here. You do it so it can attach on and off. That'd be pretty cool. I'm gonna head for home now. Sorry, it's only a short video. I just wanted to test the new location out for the mic and see if it fixed all the issues, which hopefully I have, and you can hear me clearly. So do you know you got the right bike? Basically when you go out for 30 minutes in the morning and it turns into it's going dark and I'm going to be riding in the dark. So yeah, I think that's always a good sign when you just <laughs> want to stay out. I'm even thinking in my head, oh, I could just go to Scotland now, but I'm going to use my head. I'm going to go home, have a bit of a rest and be riding all day. Had plenty of fun which is the main thing. Hopefully this audio's come out well and everyone can hear me, which will be good. I'm trying to think of anything else to say, really. Obviously the Iceland trip's probably got knocked back a notch, unfortunately. We've just got to use that head a bit. We've got to get the bike sorted. There are lots of day trips coming up now, up to Scotland, which will be fun. Staying up there. Um, I want to go up there before it gets too bad weather-wise. Inverness, etc. But from me and the GS Roller, goodbye.